the uh, City of Jackson Chief Equity Officer and candidate for Jackson County Commission, John Willis. Hi, John. How's it going, Bart? How Good. you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm do you're not helping me with the big monitors of 4K definition of pizza while I'm on a diet here, but <laughs> Sorry about melty that. cheese, everything going on there. Like <laughs> well, you'll need to get uh, uh, you know energy for your campaign, so I think uh, pizza's a lot A couple today. pieces of pizza, that, that, yeah. that, that protein will help me out a little bit. <laughs> After we're done here, uh, help yourself. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll send the slim guy sitting in the chair over there. We go. <laughs> When I heard that you were running for uh, county commission, I was, I was surprised, but then again, I, I wasn't. Uh, I was surprised because I know uh, for many years people yeah. have encouraged you to run for uh, office. Yes, sir. Uh, what was it uh, about this particular seat at this particular time that you decided you wanted to uh, run for public office, John? So you're very, very accurate, Bart, in that for, for a long time. That has been some discussion among myself, a lot of friends, uh, even family. But I just think at the time right now in our community, uh, in, our, in our country, with the way things are, I feel that I can be a voice that reflects our community strongly. I think that I can have some conversations, whether they're uncomfortable conversations, comfortable conversations, that people may not be able to have the same way that I feel like I can do that because of the rapport that I have with some people that are, that are on their own county or that are inside the county, people that I represent within our community. So I just felt at this time, it's a, it's a good opportunity. Definitely don't aspire to be a long time politician. De never really thought I would be in the seat that I'm in right now. But I think right now, I can be a voice for our community that means a lot. And I have some conversations and, 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 and hopefully uh, be influential and in some positive things happening for our city and for our county. Let's talk about the district. It's District 7, which uh, represents um, half of the city of Jackson, Yes, right? half of the city. So it kind of goes just, just past what South Street comes all the way up to just the other side of Monroe, coming down, going down to 4th Street from uh, Cooper down. I'm sorry, it actually goes all the way out on High Street out around the, uh, the, the industrial area over there. Comes down, prospect down to 4th Street, comes back up Greenwood around to Franklin Street and comes back up across to Cooper. So it represents just half of the city. I think eight is, eight is the other district inside of the city. So it gives me a chance to represent the community that I grew up in, as well as the community that I've worked hard for, for for a lot of years. And I think I have a pretty great rapport with our community. I try to keep my ear close to the ground, Bart, and I understand fully that this is to be about the community, not about the views of John Willis or what I think, but it is to be about our community. I think uh, that I've demonstrated for my community that, that that's what my work consists of. And so to get an opportunity to do it, to get an opportunity to serve the community on a greater level, that's, that's I think it's the right time for it. Let's talk about the politics of this. Uh, the seat uh, was vacated when Daniel Mahoney was elected right. to, the, to the mayor uh, Correct. Uh, uh, ship of the city. The county, um, in order to fill the vacancy, um, Daniel Mahoney had to resign as a county commissioner. Yes. He, he did. Right, he uh, did. Then the county, which uh, the county commission is uh, majority Republican. Yes. They, re they appointed, and to the surprise of no one, yeah. they, re they appointed a, a Republican in that to position. fill yes, a, a Democrat's seat in a, a, a Democratic district. Right. How yes, much sir. of the politics of that um, encouraged you that uh, you wanted to run? I, I think just in general, I felt like the, the voice of the people in that predict, particular incident was, it wasn't the will of the people, if that makes sense. And so and I think I mean, hopefully the people will come out to, to show that that was not the intent of the, the constituents in that district. Mm -hmm. And I hope I will be uh, the representative that they choose to do that and, and to represent the, their will. So definitely disappointed in, in how it all went down. But more importantly, I have an opportunity to do something about it. And that's what we want to do at this time. You would, if elected, be joining just, I believe, one other Democrat that's yes, on that county yes, board. Yes, yes, that'd be Darius Williams, just a yeah. commissioner Darius Williams, a pastor Darius Williams. And it'd be, it'd be an honor to, it'd be, it'd be an honor to serve with the county commission, period, but definitely an honor to serve along with Darius and those there, so. To be in such a minority position on, on a county board, uh, which is mostly mm -hmm. Republicans. Yes. Um, what are the challenges to get to, to represent that voice 
uh, one against eight others, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's just uh, well, well, the, a lot of votes have been, what, seven, two votes uh, and different things like that. I think the challenge for me is is being able to to be persuasive, persuasive and uh, convincing in the purposes and the, the reason for change on some things, if that makes sense, to, to be able to bring some real life experiences, some real life conversations that I have with people on a regular basis that are struggling economically, that, are, there, are, that there are some changes that can happen inside the county that would help these families, that would help this community do some things differently. So I, I trust that my reputation as a person that serves in this community will be will allow me to have some conversations with the uh, other county commissioners mm -hmm. that I, that I, I would hope to be able to convince them of some issues that I and I understand there, there are always political agendas and things that get in the way but my trust is that if you're a good person the 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 ideal the end game should always be to do the right thing that that's my my, my belief I believe if they are good people and I believe they are good people your end game, the doing the right things, should, should, should surpass whatever you're looking at politically, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So doing the right thing for your community, doing the right thing for constituents, doing the right thing for our city and our county should surpass whatever you feel your, your party affiliation of that is. So my goal is, and, and this, to some that might be a, a naive goal, <laughs> and like, well, you have no idea. Well, I, I, I don't but that won't deter me from being able to have those conversations. At that point, if I've shown you that this is the best for our community and then you refuse to do it, that's something everyone can see as well. What do you see as the county's issues, the biggest problems that you uh, want to have on, on your agenda? Uh, I guess the, the first thing to me would be to, to take a look inside closer than what I'm able to see from, from my perspective. So from, from my perspective, I've seen things, I've seen votes and I'm like, whoa, wow. The thing for me is to be able to have those conversations to say, okay, this came up. This was an issue uh, regarding the uh, or, or regarding the pandemic. Why was this decision made? What influenced that decision? Maybe there's something I don't know about. But if it isn't, then we need to talk about it. We need to find out how how do we make sure that this doesn't happen again? How do we make sure that we're we're aware of the needs of everyone inside the county? And that we're considering those people when we're making those decisions. So my, my biggest concern is that we are we're not throwing things under the bus simply because there's an agenda somewhere else, and not not taking those things at face value and addressing the needs of all people. How about uh, city county relationships? Uh, over the years, we've had you know good, we've had bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of been back and forth. I remember one time we had started to kind of uh, we had started to kind of pool some resources together. And for whatever reasons, I, again, I don't know all of the details in there. I do have some insight to that. But you got to remember, so my insight from that would probably be naturally more along with the city perspective because I work for the city. I would like to hear what the other perspectives are to that and how those conversations are. I, I think the, the county and the city, I think we have to be fluid. I think we have to work as one for the, the betterment of, of the city, which is in the county, so the betterment of the county as well. So I think yeah. we have to be fluid in those decisions. You've got, um, is, I know I've already um, spent some time uh, building uh, support. You've got a number of uh, endorsements already. Who are some of the people that are on uh, your team? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I would, uh, obviously, our, our, our former former mayor, uh, for our current mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Mahoney, mm -hmm. has given us an endorsement. Um, our former mayor, Derek Dobies. We've got a list of people on there, but I've got to go over the list to see everything, but I've given some great endorsements. I know Pastor Hines and some other pastors that we were working with to get some endorsements as well. So it's, it's, it's quite a list there. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled that people think enough of me to, to endorse me publicly for an office that represents our community. So The community, I think, knows you well uh, because you've been honored uh, just this past year, the Jackson Black Excellence Awards, Community Service Award, Jackson Trailblazer Award, the Al Cotton Award, uh, the MLK Citizenship Award, the uh, NAACP Community Service Award, the Negro Professional Business Women's Community Service Award. Uh, you've got, you know, <laughs> quite a lot of accomplishments for your uh, work in, in, the, in the community as a citizen. Very, very, very appreciative for that. It doesn't help me at home with my honey-do list, but I am very appreciative that, that the, the, the people think enough of what we do to, to award us for working in Jackson. And we're looking forward to continue, man, to, to put in the work. I really believe that when you put in the work, the, the 
Uh, I actually got this from uh, the Albion College football team coach. So, coach. so Dustin, when you hear this, I got this from you. <laughs> but what is it? Focus on the root, not the fruit. So I, seriously, I sincerely believe if you focus on putting in the work, doing your homework, doing the research that I'm supposed to do, having the conversations with other commissioners and things that I'm supposed to do, if you focus on the root, the fruit will take care of themselves. While you're here, I wanted to uh, just step into the uh, current um, controversy in Grand Rapids. Yes. Uh, and we've been having these conversations since uh, George Floyd was murdered. Yes, sir. But I think everyone um, has seen or heard about the video of the incident last week uh, in which a black uh, citizen was right. uh, shot and killed yes, sir. Uh, by a white police officer. Right, shot in the back of the head. In the back of the head. Yes, sir. So lo looking at that, that videotape, it's just so painful, Bart. Um, last Friday night, my son decided to go outside of the house for one o'clock whenever he's been exercising and doing some different things. And I, 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 I lost it for a minute. I'm telling him, you, you, you can't run at one o'clock in the morning. You, you can't do that. And I'm sure they probably thought it was just overkill for me. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you go out running, the police get a call about a shooting or something. They go out and see this large six foot four, 250 pound male running. What, what could the outcome be? And then the, that followed two days later, that shooting happened, I believe it was on that Monday. But we're looking at that, I'm looking at that videotape. And so not to excuse anything that the young man did in terms of not compliance as far as following orders, don't know what he understood, what he misunderstood, but the level of escalation, my understanding from the police uh, conference yesterday was that within three minutes, another officer was there. So me, just from a citizen's point, thinking what was so bad or so wrong about a bad license plate that couldn't wait three minutes? That couldn't wait three minutes. You understand what I'm saying? What, what, where were the de-escalation tactics? There are a lot of things that come to mind. And I don't want to make a, make a judgment, but when you see a young man shot in the back of the head, there has to be questions. There has to be some accountability. There has to be a, real, a realization that a traffic stop for a bad license plate can never end in a young person dying. You have the car. If he runs, he runs. It's a bad license plate. You understand what I'm saying? So to, to, to watch that as a, a father of seven young black males, it, it's, it's, it's painful. It's painful to watch. It's painful to watch. I was very pleased that with the way that the press conference was handled, I'm very pleased with the transparency of releasing the videotapes. I trust that they'll make their judgment and, and then they'll you know, release that information as well. Uh, I had a great conversation with our chief of police, Elmer Head, and we were able to discuss some things on you know, the, the de-escalation and things that, things that could happen, things that he teaches our officers here in Jackson so that we, we, we trust and we pray that we'll always be able to avoid those, those types of situations. And, and you never know because the decision, this is made and a sudden decision. But just from what I see now, I don't know how you, how, how you rationalize these things. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of people, Bart, get caught up in these uh, defund the police. No, that's no, I'm, I'm not talking about that at all. You can't stop funding police officers. You can't do that because you, you need them. But by the same token, you do need to start looking at some other alternatives, a different way to police, a more modern way to make sure that people remain safe. For that young man to die in that situation, to me, is just extreme. It's unjust from my perspective. And that is kind of, well, kind of a seemingly early judgment. But as a father, I can't just say what's politically correct. You understand what I'm saying? I have to speak to you from my heart to say that it doesn't matter what angle I turn that video at and I look at that, when a young person young man gets shot in the back of the head. I, I don't know, maybe if it was accident. I, I don't, I don't want to make excuses. I'm just saying when you see that, you have to speak from the heart. 
And, and that was painful, painful to watch. I agree, yeah. it was. Uh, extremely painful to watch. I, th I think everyone is agreement on that. Yes, yes. And uh, definitely a horrible tragedy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, it's possible there will be a um, primary? Yes, it is possible for a primary. I think there's uh, up to the 15th for uh, candidates to, to file. Mm -hmm. So if there's a candidate that files as, as a Democrat, then there would be a primary. But we're looking for it, man, and, and whatever we do, everything we do is going to be, is going to be on top of the table. That's what we do. If there is a candidate, it's going to be, it'll be with class. Uh, long time theory, I share with my boys and my family. I never believe that my candle burns brighter by blowing somebody else's candle out. If that's what it takes, then I'm out. That's not what I do. All right, well, good so. luck. All right. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thanks a lot for having us, Bart. Looking forward to being in the wonderful JTV studios anytime we can. Man. It's, it's like NBC studios here, y'all. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Always nice to have you here, John. Yes, sir. Happy Always Easter. good to be here. Right. Well, thanks so much for having us, Bart. Looking right. forward to it. Yeah. Uh, Jackson's right. Chief Equity Officer and candidate for Jackson County Commission, John Willis.